everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta for our weekly coffee chats. We're on my channel this week, and I am joined with one of my besties, Catherine Edwards, and all of our besties watching right now as we gab about life events and things going on and bullies and all that jazz. How are you doing today, Catherine? Oh, I'm really, really good and looking forward to this conversation. As always, look forward to all our conversations. I was telling you before we went on that orange is such a pretty color on you, too. So, Oh, well, thank you. I love orange. I really do love orange. Yeah. So, well, before we get into it, I just wanted to, Catherine, you and I have had an issue with somebody leaving comments under our our friends who comment, especially on Rumble, on our videos. And there's this person pretending to be us that leaves their phone number. It's an Alabama number for you guys to call. And I've covered this a couple of times. I just want to reiterate it, you guys. That's not us. It's not Catherine. It's not me. Um, I was telling Catherine I actually text the number. <laughs> because you're impersonating me um just use discernment when it comes there's we can't we can't really do anything Kath, can we Catherine? when these fake accounts pop up it's so frustrating and the trouble is by the time you know it they've put the comment literally everywhere so you're either going to spend you know six hours going through deleting them all because even after you block them and then they just spring up with another one and another one i keep having it with fake instagram accounts and telegram accounts and things like this so it's, it's just ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure people realize it's a spam. Yeah, I but think there's always have, a few yeah. that don't. Right. And I, I think you guys, I, same thing. I had no idea until I got an email from a six. I don't really go on Rumble that often. I don't check the comments on Rumble that often. So um, I didn't know until some, until Dragonfly actually emailed me and, and said that, you know, the, this, these comments are being left. And it is, you got, you just use your discernment, guys. Usually, I think you can kind of tell when it's the person. I mean, I, I'm never going to tell you. I'm not, first of all, guys, Catherine and I are not idiots. We're two women. We're not going to post our private numbers on the internet mm. for safety reasons. I don't have a problem giving my number out to people privately, but to put it on the internet like that for two women, that's just not safe. Um, also, I do want to remind anybody who gets the idea of hacking that I own my name. I legally own the name Esoteric Atlanta. I made sure of that before I even opened my channel and Catherine that's her name her actual name so Absolutely. you know you're you're kind of met playing with fire there from a legal perspective but just be just have discernment guys yes fake instagram accounts fake um comments on youtube that are under our names fake uh twitter any anything like that we that's not us you guys so just just use discernment don't give anybody you know i will never send you a private message asking you for money so just no, me. no, none of us do private readings. You know, I, I all my consults are booked through my website. Um, same with Bryce's. You know, we do not do private readings. We don't ask for money. We don't tell you to invest in anything. And that's the only time you have my permission when you see these comments to put a really rude comment back saying scammer piss off. Um, because I do think sometimes when you name and shame them, it just highlights it to others. And this this will tie in with what we're going to be talking about today, because the energy stream, you know, it, it's not a big deal because most people know. But it's so sad when people do get scammed by things. And I have had a few people that have been. And I think it's really, really important to, it does also have one person who got really cross with me because they responded to a message on a face Instagram account. And then they started projecting all this blame on me for trying to do this, trying to do that. It wasn't even me, you know. Yeah, sure. that's the hard part. They're using our name. So that's what pisses yeah. me off. Like you're using my name to, to yeah. try to scam people and that I don't consent to that. So listen, guys of the universe, I don't consent to you using my name without my permission to scam people. So yeah, just, and, and if you do, unfortunately, if you do respond to scammers and get caught up in that, guys, there's nothing Catherine and I can do. We can't uh -huh. fund you money. We can't get, that's, it's not us. It's not us. And that even when you report it to the platform, they do nothing. I mean, honestly, the amount of our videos that are out on scam accounts that are monetized on YouTube is just ridiculous. And the, the platforms do absolutely nothing. So there's not, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Are good. people are making money off of us, just not us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so we were going to talk about bullying today, Catherine, because I we kind of alluded to this a little bit last week on your channel, too. We talked about you know, just, just uh, the world is so different now. We call them trolls now, which are basically bullies. That's basically what a troll is, yeah. is a bully. And so I kind of want to talk about, because this is something I think I still struggle with. I think most people, if they're being honest, still struggle with this. How do we handle bullies? 
How does that work? How do you, what's the best lesson you've learned in handling bullies or trolls or abusive people? Such a good question. And it's something that comes up for so many of us in different aspects of the lives. And the first thing I would like to say is for me, when I'm talking about bullying here today, I'm talking about verbal abuse, not about physical abuse, which for me is assault. So when I'm talking about here, I'm not talking about someone who's in a situation that's actually being physically abuse that that's outside the scope of what I'm talking about today and so for me then you can divide it into two things the in-person on the online and I would I'm going to start with the online actually because it's so so rife now I think the first thing to keep reminding ourselves is that no one who's happy and confident in themselves behaves like that so I'm not suggesting we have empathy for bullies because I'm not going, I'm not at that point now at all. Because I think once you're grown ups and adults, um, then regardless of what trauma you've got, you've got different ways, you've got a choice about how you deal with that. But the online bullying and trolls and awful abusive behavior, I think what the biggest thing I've learned is actually it's really important to set clear boundaries and put a stop to it so a lot of people advise do nothing say nothing don't feed into the energy but actually when you look at the laws of the universe and the fa fact that energy flows where attention goes let's say an example just you've got uh, something on social media or a video and someone started leaving some really negative horrible stuff bullying stuff if you don't stop it that's flowing energy in that direction. And what I find is people very easily get knocked into that vibration and can start joining in in different ways. And it gets very abusive very quickly. I saw this on Instagram recently. So one of the biggest things I've learned, Bryce, is stop it in its tracks. I don't agree anymore with ignoring it. I agree in taking action and we can talk about what that might be to stop it. So if it's online, I would block the person really as soon as I saw it now, because I think there's a real danger that it sets the energetic tone and sets people, uh, everyone else on that tone as well. Yeah, I really, because I've noticed that, you know, I've been very clear on my channel that my, you know, and I think, I, I, I don't want to speak for you, Catherine, but I think you would probably agree I'm totally fine with viewers not agreeing with me, having a different opinion, but there's a way to talk about different opinions in a respectful way. And I encourage de a respectful debate because that's how we learn. But what I do not tolerate is name calling. What I do not tolerate is attacking someone's integrity or their character just because they have a different opinion than you do. And I've made that very clear. If that happens, you will be removed from my channel because that there, there's no room for that. And I had a comment the other day. Now, I will say, and I, I really was disappointed in this comment for the person who left this comment. I will say that sometimes YouTube glitches. Sometimes comments get reshuffled. Sometimes comments get removed by the platform and then they reappear again. And I don't think there's anything nefarious behind that. I think it's a computer system and computer systems sometimes glitch. Like what is it over a billion people are uploading a, a, a video every minute on YouTube? There's going to be glitches. It's, that's just gonna, that's just common sense. And this person was kind of accusing me of deleting his comment because he had a different opinion he went back and edited it and saw oh i didn't it was actually just reshuffled and i was like well why didn't you just apologize for accusing me of doing something that i didn't do and then he made a comment about me deleting a comment that somebody else had left um that was very nasty to another person in the comment section and i actually didn't delete that comment either i gave the person a warning and I said, yeah. you're welcome to be here with a different uh, different opinion. You just need to be respectful and, and treat people like human beings. And he's the one that went back and deleted his comment after I said that. But yeah. I, and, and I, and it made me think, I was like, do you really, to this person that left this comment, I was like, do you believe that because I'm a YouTuber, because I have a, a decent sized platform that I therefore must take abuse? I think they do, Bryce, because I've had this a lot on mine as well. And I see a consistent theme of people saying, well, if you put yourself up in the public eye, you should be used to this and you should expect it. And it's like, no, you're, you're judging everyone by your standards. And what I'd like to point out back to people, 
is and i know most of the people watching this aren't the ones doing it but we've all had to encounter it and we've all seen it happening on all the platforms and you know not just ours on all of them you've only got to look at twitter or x and, and instagram and it's it's just foul but the thing is you get back what you put out into the universe and if you're putting out that nastiness don't surprise be surprised when your life sucks yeah. And I think in, ter in terms of comments, let's take YouTube as an example, because we're on that platform now. YouTube will hold what they call potentially abusive or inappropriate comments. Yeah. And that's not down to us. And, but contrary to con uh, popular belief, we are working all day, every day, and we don't sit there looking at comments all day. We just yeah. can't, physically can't do that. We'll do them as and when we can. Secondly, I've had quite a few situations like you've just explained, Bryce, where I've gone back and said to the person, look, you know, this is really inappropriate and this is why I think it's really inappropriate and they've chosen to delete their comment. But thirdly, it's like if you see someone's going down the road and abusing someone else on the chat and name calling, as we've spoken before, we all know it's through their inadequacy. We yeah. know that yeah. we know because they can't hold a proper opinion. And every single one a person on these platforms is very welcome to go up and set their own platform and do their things. But I can hand on heart say, in my life, I have never, ever gone on any social media platform and left a negative comment. Same. It I I hardly even ever, sometimes I'll comment on like my friends' channels just to help yeah. the, the algorithm because it does help. But I Absolutely. typically don't even comment on people's YouTube channels. If I'm watching, I, you know. I, I will just, go in and give a good comment because I'm a strong yeah. believer. I don't believe what you said, Bryce, about the algorithms. Knowing how hard it is being a YouTube provider, I get so many personal messages of which I am really thankful because it really is helpful of people saying, oh, I really love that video. I really love this. I really love that. And I often will get back to them and I'll say, it would really help me out if you put the comment on there because it does feed the algorithms. So I try on videos that I'm watching on all other platforms to leave something constructive, but I'd either leave something constructive or nothing at all. Yeah, same. Because what I would never, I've never, ever, ever gone and done left something negative because why would i it's like your choice you're on that platform by choice if you don't like it it's like on the tv if you don't like the program you turn I'm it off yeah and just move yourself in the situation so in terms of i for me now it's a really hard line on my channel i'm really clear like you i'm like i absolutely love different opinions i genuinely love them because I've learned so much over the last few years, over my lifetime, but particularly over the last few years, by listening to other opinions and having different perspectives that I haven't even thought about. Because like when we were on with Mike, Rock and Mike, and we were talking about the son of Sam, and you brought up quite rightly so, because Mike's in New York, he's got a completely different colour, but completely different perspective. And this is the beauty is we've all got different upbringings. We all live in different parts of the world. We've got different experiences. We're in different emotional and physical states. And all of those mean that we'll see the same situation and hear the same information through completely different lenses. And this is how we can learn where our blind spots are and where our fixed belief systems that maybe need to be relaxed a bit are. But there is never an excuse. And to think that just because anyone, whether it's a politician, that's why I don't even agree, and this really piss a lot of people off, but even just going and saying, yeah. I shouldn't have said that because I'll get your channel. <laughs> I can mute it. It's okay. Well, <laughs> let's, let's go. Brandon. I'll, I'll say that. that. What she said, guys, was let's go, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But even that, yes, you've got to have a bit of humor and things, but equally at the same time, I think we've just got to be really careful where we put our attention. I would so much rather people put their attention on what they do want and the candidates and the people they do want to support because we all know that the worst thing you can do to a bully is completely ignore them and not feed their fire. Yeah, it's 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 gotten, I mean, again, we spoke about, I'll, I'll uh, tag last week's video in the description box to you guys because we kind of touched on this a little bit last week on Catherine's channel and it's this this predicament, right? Because when when we were younger uh, most of us watching i don't think i have most of my demographic is my age or older so i i think most of us watching did have a childhood that was without the internet or mm -hmm. cell phones and if you were a bully bullies sometimes got socked yeah you you 
the stakes were high. I mean, the playground bullies I, I have a little bit more respect for than the internet bullies because the stakes were higher, right? You know, mm -hmm. and and nowadays people can sit behind a keyboard and project that nastiness to to uh, to people they don't even know because of their own perception. I mean, we've talked about it a lot, Catherine, with our sponsorships and uh, payments and stuff like our 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 patrons, all that kind of stuff. When we get when we do agnostic and things we can do to legally make money off of our work and the bullying we get for that the bullying that we get for actually taking trying to take care of ourselves and pay our bills and so and that's the projection of somebody else and it is it's so frustrating it's so infuriating i mean just going back to that you know that that people believe because i am a face on their youtube screen that i somehow deserve to be bullied it's so disgusting. And I, I yeah, I, Catherine, I've never, I will intentionally leave comments, like I said, for Catherine or for any of my friends, Shanti, um, for Sarah, uh, the tea leaf reader, my friend, I will constantly go and leave, leave comments because I know that it helps them. It's a positive yeah. comment that will help them because they're my friends and I want their work to get out there. I want that for them, right? And I don't understand the mentality that people have. I, I kind of want to be like, do you have a life? Why is the problem, Bryce, that is they really don't. And it's a very sorry state of affairs. And with AI, it's likely to get even more when most people have lost their purpose. And I, this is where I think we talk about us all being a community on here. And I really do feel, you know, our channels, Shanti's channels, um, you know, the people that we work with, it, it really is a community. We've all evolved, hopefully, so much and are continuing to do. And this is where I think we can all really help each other out. And and I'm not just, I'm talking about this in the wider perspective. We're just using YouTube as an example because we're on there. But this is where we all step in and we start to change behavior because AI is monitoring everything all the time. And this is why one of the other reasons why the pen is suddenly dropped to me to stop, if it's online, to stop it as soon as I see it. Because when you let that snowball, we are literally programming AI, which is driving a lot of our lives and a lot of what information we get fed on all our platforms. That is driving what AI is going to feed you. So you're going to get more of that sort of energy vibration coming through. So it's actually really damaging to everyone who's involved in that to see that vibration. And I just always laugh. I always think, you know, I'm a little alien looking down on planet Earth. And I'm like, what playground am I watching here? It amazes me to think that hum that adults could behave like this. Now, children, bullying with children, I do think is a bit of a different situation um, because a lot of children who bully and who are bullied have got a lot of insecurities and they haven't necessarily had the role models, got the emotional intelligence, the skill set, or had anyone to show them how to deal with that in a different way. So I do think dealing with children who are bullies or being bullied is a very different scenario, in my opinion, because you've got to understand that at different stages of development, the brain isn't developed in the same way. The life experiences, they might not have had the mentors in their life to actually um, have some choice about it. But anyone who's sitting on YouTube has got the free will to search, choose to search for something constructive or choose to something to be offended about. And I keep coming back to it. Good old Wayne Dyer. I love you, Wayne Dyer. Um, you know, people will look for a hundred things a day to be offended about. And this is where I think each and every one of us, we know when we're on a bad mood day. We know when, when our vibe has dropped a lot. So therefore, that's when we have to make really conscious decisions for something that's going to really help us and uplift us not to feed the negative state that we're already in. You know, those people that suffer from stress and anxiety, and we all do to some degree, it's just to different degrees at different stages in our life. You know, this is where we have to take self-responsibility when you're an adult. When you're a child at school and you're in a particular situation or in home life, it can be very difficult for to remove yourself from that situation. But online, you've got a choice. And I think we all need to crack down on the behavior a lot quicker because why, how can we complain about all the censorship if we're not self-centering and self-monitoring? And that oh, means God, everyone... Leaving. Yeah, and, and I think too, like when I see when I see people comment nasty things to the 
people in my comment section that are engaging in conversation, I feel like as a platform owner, that it is my duty to, to defend those people and to say, hey, that's yeah. not cool, man. Like, you can't speak to my, my subscribers that way. You can't speak to, I'll just, Jane Doe, you know, 616, whatever. You can't call, you, you can't name call her that. That's not okay. It's okay that you have a yeah. different opinion, but I'm not going to, and I, and I wonder too, like when you actually make that stand and someone sees that you stood up for them, does that shift the energy then that, you know, cause sometimes I think we second guess ourselves, like, like, do I deserve to be called a name? Do I, you know, we, when, when people start and that's, and to me that I know like gaslighting is telling somebody what they saw happen didn't actually happen. But to me, when you're basically shaming a, a, a shaming a content creator for deleting abusive comments, and saying, oh, you just take, take, can't take criticism. Well, there's a difference between constructive yeah. criticism and abuse. There's a very big difference. And to make a content creator feel like you should be able to abuse them at your will is a you problem, not the content creator's problem. And I don't, I don't fault any content creator for deleting abusive comments because there's a huge difference. Completely. And I think it's so funny because, you know, if most content on YouTube, a lot of it falls into the podcast where there's an interview situation. So um, the host is interviewing a guest and asking the guest to express their opinion. Yeah. They're not necessarily agreeing with the guest's opinion, but being yeah. respectful enough, if you've invited a guest in to your show, you're not. Why would you invite someone in and then just humiliate them and just damn them? listen respectfully to their opinion and then take some time to think is there something i need to learn if we're having coffee chats like this the whole point is we're friends talking and discussing our opinion on our channels so don't then criticize us for being opinionated because do you want us to sit there and just say to everything when bryce asked me a question i said i don't know don't know don't know <laughs> it's good it's not going to be much fun to watch but you can choose to be here so i think the fun the thing is i think and i would put a call out to all of us bryce and i included because we use instagram we use different platforms i think we can start changing the behavior from our perspective as the users as the audience because otherwise we're so quick i was thinking about this on my dog walk today bryce i was like actually there's something really wrong with this whole awakening movement to me. There's something really off course for it. And what I, the conclusion I came to is like, we're still, for whatever justification we do it, we're spending so much time and energy pointing out what's wrong in the world. And I, I actually sat there and thought, I thought, do you know what? Before I joined the so-called truth of community which we all hate that name but it's what we're lumped with so let's get used to it before i joined that community i was really happy i still am really happy there are atrocities going on in the world which break my heart particularly when it comes to children and animals there always have been but me pitying you know when i first started learning animal communication the biggest thing i had to really take a cold hard look at myself and how my behavior was not helping rescue animals for example is pity is such a low vibrational so pity is is not going to help anyone when there's trauma going on in the world feeling pity for those people so it's either in the category of can i do something about it in which case yes do something about it or no don't feed the energy into it and I think this does tie in with the bullying capacity because I'm like, we've got to the stage where we excuse bad behavior in all areas of society far, far too easily. We all want to use social media platforms because that's how we can communicate and find our tribe across the road. And yet we, we complain and complain. I've complained and complained because I've been censored massively. And yet... If we don't start behaving better, how can we affect the controllers of the platform? How can we expect them to be behaving better than we're behaving? Because quite frankly, most of the people participating do behave like children in a school playground that don't know better. Yeah, it's um, I, I was saying you before we even started the recording that I just I'm so frustrated because at this point, the so-called truth or community is and, and we're again, guys for 99.9% .9 of the people watching right now, we're not talking about you. You're joining no, us. I'm really not talking about yeah, you. We're not talking about you. We're, but we know, but we're having this conversation because we know that you are aware of this as well. The truther community has become worse 
worse behaved than the normies. Yeah. Way worse behaved. And it's that entitlement. We were talking a lot about like boundaries too. And sometimes bullies don't know, bullies don't respect boundaries. And my mother used to tell this to us growing up. When someone says stop, you stop. Yeah. You know, like you, if someone says stop, I mean, usually my sister and I were like fighting or something and be pulling each other's hair and she'd be like, and one of us say stop, you, mama, you stop, you stop. So when someone tells you, like myself, you're allowed on this channel to have a respectful debate. But if you name call, if you bully, that's a hard boundary. Now your choice is you can push that boundary and you could ignore the permission, the, the rules of this platform. And the consequence is that you're, because you push that boundary, you're going to be blocked. Mm. That's not my, I've given you the boundary of my channel. So for those that think I shouldn't have a boundary because I'm a, I'm a person on your YouTube, so I'm a human being. Just as you have boundaries, for those of us watching, you have boundaries as well. We all have boundaries. And I think, Catherine, like, I think in today's age, you and I are pretty good about allowing to, like, so many people out there now, if someone has a different opinion, they just block them from the channel completely. We encourage that. We encourage people to give their perspective. Because you're right, Catherine, you're seeing it through a different lens. When you stop and listen... We stop it. What's that? That's what's that quote? People say people don't listen to understand. They listen to respond. If you stop and listen to understand someone else's percep percep perception of something, you might not. You still still might not agree with them, but at least you understand where they're coming from as a human being, and that's powerful. And when you start name calling instead, it's like no, yeah. you're done. You cross the boundary. It's a really good example you just brought up there. And in our chat last week on my channel. Um, Someone left a comment. It was one of the ones where you'd said about this guy had um, got his daughter who'd been um, bullying. He'd found out his daughter was the one doing the bullying. So he made her walk to school, but he drove behind her to make sure she was safe and everything. And someone took real offense at that and said, what a disgusting way to do it. And, like that. and there were so many assumptions in this woman's comment yeah so many assumptions she'd assumed that that child was traumatized by it by not knowing the story at all or anything and this is what i mean about it is human nature we've all been brought up to really take offense at things most people have been brought up in that high stress environment where you do so it does take training not to do it but the beauty of when you put something down in writing is you've got a chance to go back and reflect so I deliberately left that comment and didn't respond for a few days because I thought, okay, I need to sit with this and sort of see um, what it was. And then I went back and left a link to the live that Shanti and I did because we did cover this in quite a lot while and it was about making assumptions for things we didn't know about. Because there's a big difference. We can all see why we react like this. But we've just got to look and sort of say, honestly, am I just jumping, making two and two makes five from this? Yeah. Could I have asked a question and asked for more clarification on this situation? Because I get that you can raise concern over something, but instead of raising concern and assuming the worst, how about assuming the best or asking for more information so that you could then make your mind up whether your assumption was really true or not? Well, that and comes I down to researching and critical thinking, too, because that video is available. You can just Google it. and They don't live that far from the school. So if you watch the video, you can tell this child was not being traumatized. She might have been embarrassed to show up to school yeah. walking with her dad following behind in the truck, which was probably the point so that she wouldn't bully anymore. But if you watch the video, you would see it was nothing. Her I mean, it was a flat sidewalk. And this is what I mean. I think we can all learn so much from bullying because there are a lot of extreme bullies out there. And and on the physical side of the things, I think, you know, often needs different approaches. And this is where um, boundaries really come into it. I, I've watched a lot about this because having children go through the schooling system, you get involved in bullies there. Funny enough, Bryce... I was never, ever bullied at school. And in fact, even though I was the smallest in the class, I always was the one that stood up to all the bullies because I had such a how band in it. And I think it's because I'd experienced a lot of bullying in the home environment, which I couldn't escape from at that stage, that actually I developed a lot of coping skills. And so when in there, it was a, a school environment where I could have a choice in it. And, and what I did find there really strongly is where you set a hard boundary 
and just I am not engaging in this and you are not doing this. It really works. But obviously a lot of particularly children haven't got the confidence to do that. And if you're in, say, an abusive, you know, as I said, this video isn't about abusive marriages or abusive relationships and things because that's a different stage. It's more about the general lack of respect in the way people treat other people. And then we blame the master controllers, the cabal, whatever it like, and we blame it for, for behaving like this. But what actions are we allowing to go on in our daily life? You know, it's like I always said, you know, unfortunately, anyone, and it's really hard for us not to, because I've got animals and they have to eat meat, anyone who buys factory farmed animals that are slaughtered in a slaughterhouse or that buys a particular breed of dog because it looks cute how can then we then moan about what is going on in a lot of harvesting on the human front of exactly. stuff? i thought i feel the same yeah, way Catherine. same way how can we it, it's just the innocent among us how can we um complain but yet then go buy a bunch of meat from the girl I, I, it's the same thing Every so decision that, yeah. we make and um seriously it's a minefield trust me as i've been working in natural health for 30 years now it's a minefield because when you start being aware of all these things you can't even have a relaxing trip to the shops because you're reading every label this is how i got my glasses and why my eyes got you know started getting strained because you can't even go to the grocery shop or the health shop and read a bottle of shampoo or or or, or even a vegan sauce you sin you you'd be horrified at what yeah. i mean what madman thinks of put it or woman thinks of putting these things in there so i do get it can be overwhelming and you have to have an enjoyment in life and you have to accept we're in this sort of matrix to some extent so don't feel guilty about everything you put in your mouth and everything you buy and every decision but equally i think i'm personally very cautious about what i complain about in other people's behavior when i can see things that i've done to support that even far down the line um we've got to be realistic that all of these little decisions add up and are telling whoever you think the controllers are that we consent yeah and that, that hypocrisy like i say one thing but do another that the doing the energy is what's actually the consent one thing i wanted to end on catherine with this coffee chat if you don't mind and what we can use that that comment on your channel as as an example because i thought that was a pretty nasty nasty yeah. comment that was made and so let's say that the the video that i referred to and i even, I even think i said in that video some people might not like this video some people might disagree with this you did. Um, as you're talking i'm just going to bring out the comment yeah okay um well i was thinking how maybe we go back to basics like if there's something that triggers you in a video or something that maybe you feel the opposite or have the opposite opinion how do you then so how should have that woman responded and yeah. i have my own thoughts and i'll let you find the comment if it's still up um so we can kind of reword it that would that and maybe that can get Okay, maybe people have just forgotten how to debate and maybe people have just forgotten maybe we've come to a place in our society where people are so used to name calling that name calling is just second nature and yeah. like, for me if i might have said something like oh my god i'm so that makes me feel so happy that the father actually was taking responsibility um for teaching yeah. his daughter not to bully however i'm a little bit concerned about his method do you have any more information on it or something like that would have been respectful yeah, completely. So the comment is from Katie Wright, 2232. And I am putting it in here because you're putting it out there with things. And it's actually been edited since it was put. So this is a, a less severe version of the comment. I find it ironic that on the one hand, discussion is about being respectful to others. And on the other hand, you're talking about smacking children. Is that really a mature way um, to example respectful treatment of others? We weren't talking and saying we've smack children i've never smacked a child in my i've only smacked no, what we were saying is we got smacked as children yeah. quite frankly it didn't traumatize us is the point we were making we we realized we deleted it but we were never saying we never said we'd smacked our children um so anyway is that really mature an example respectful treatment of others to me it's always seemed that simply the adult's way of acting out his own frustration over the situation the story about the father making his daughter work to school sounds slightly sadistic if you have a child who is engaging in bullying behavior, you need to get the bottom of what's going on with that child. But I mean, look at just how many you need to, you need to. Do how you, many you. One, and I will, what's her name again? 
um, I'll just I'll finish and then I'll say it. Why is she acting out in this way? Obviously, the child has serious issues that need to be addressed sympathetically. Yes, realistically, but not in this manner. I find the story very sad and actually appalling. His approach would do nothing than worse than what is going on with her. She didn't just wake up one day and decide to be a bully. It sounds to me like her father may be the bully in this story. The truth is that children learn from what we do, not we what we manipulate them to do. Taking action should mean a, taking a mature approach to the underlying cause of the behaviour. So anyone reading that statement, there are so many. Um, very narcissistic. Two, two, three, two. There are so many projections there, Katie. That was a very narcissistic was, comment. That was very narcissistic. Was really yeah. narcissistic. And I do want to call it out because it's fair to if you're going to put that on them and make so many assumptions about other people, we've a right to review that. And I, in a respectful way, and I thought long and hard, and then I pointed her to the the video that um, Shanti and I did that might make her think about her reactions. And that has been edited, that comment, so it was a lot harsher the first time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. These people, this is the problem we're in. We're buggered if we do and we buggered if we don't. I don't know the story of the father, and I felt no need to comment on it because I yeah. got the point that you were trying to make. And had I felt strongly about it, I would have gone and looked up that story or asked for more information. But either way, it was pretty obvious that the father was trying to do something to the best of her ability. Any of us that are parents, whether it's to a two-legged or a four-legged, you learn as you go along. You do the best you can with the tools you've got and you get better and you get better. And this chap was trying to take responsibility and father and to just project all these and to say that it's ironic. We didn't say we'd smacked anyone. No. So twisting words. And I yeah. think we have to all take accountability. And I don't want to get to a world where everyone's scared to say anything because we might use the wrong phrase and it might be insulting. I do it all the time. I was speaking to someone yesterday and she said a phrase, she's on TV, this woman, and she said a phrase that I thought was absolutely fine. And she said, oh, my gosh, I can't say that anymore because apparently it's derogatory to this group of people. I said, well, I didn't know that. I would have been to see. So you, we can express our opinions. So, Katie, you can ask and sort of say, oh, I've got this concerns. Can I ask for more information about this? Exactly. Can I ask you two to clarify would have been a very kind and constructive. But if you ask questions in a confu in a, a accusationary way, there's only one energy you're going to get. Questioning our integrity. And basically, yeah. what, and, and, and I, that drives me crazy, Catherine. People put words in our mouth or twist what we said. That's a narcissistic trait. That is, by definition, a yeah. narcissistic abusive trait to twist someone's words, to make it sound. And basically, all Catherine and I were talking about is that we were disciplined growing up. We had consequences. There were consequences to our actions. And that's why as adults, we're shocked now to see this behavior because we had severe consequences to our actions growing up. And then to go go behind that and create a whole narrative about a father, a, a basically accusing a father of doing things that we don't know. We know nothing about. And being a bully himself when he's trying to do that. There's so many assumptions. And if you don't know, there's two things um that, that i would say to kt for this first and foremost re-listen to the video before making the comment because we hear things from our belief systems so you will hear it differently you will hear our words differently and you genuinely will the mind does play tricks on us based on your limiting beliefs and we all will so but we, that's different to putting words in the other people's hands your responsibility as an adult is to go back and re-listen and say did they really say this or not or was that my assumption and if we had really said that to ask for some clarification or to express but to 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 do a sort of shaming post based oh, on yeah, something totally that trying to shame actually me. said is is ridiculous because we have never said we hit children at all oh um so you know it is ridiculous I, I think this is the stage we've got to is this lack of self-accountability and i have been picked up on things that i have said that i thought oh yeah that wasn't great actually thank you that really wasn't yeah. great completely i'm not saying i don't ever say things that are inappropriate because i do yeah yeah but well, we have the receipt this yeah. Well, the thing is, too, I will say, Catherine, like even for Katie, if she'd gone back and looked at everybody else's comments, nobody even even 
even considered the like even saw what she saw so for me i if i were katie i'd be like okay all these other people no none of these other people are bringing this up so maybe i heard it wrong because if you're really, yeah. really saying kids need to be smacked around then other people probably would have commented that but but i think yeah. most people understood we were saying when we were children we had boundaries we had consequences yeah that and was what we cross those boundaries now some children aren't aren't lucky enough and they do have very abusive parents yeah. and abusive teachers and abusive people in lives and that's that's different that's a different scenario but you know if you've got uh, 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 anyone in your life that says this are my boundaries and you choose to cross them it's a conscious choice and therefore you will take there's ca there's cause and that's karma cause and effect yeah. well um, I too i want to answer something with katie as well i grew up in an abusive childhood i had a lot of abuse i never bullied anyone same here so claiming that that little girl must have learned her bullying tactics from her dad is not necessarily true mm. and that's defamation mm. for you to already go ahead and make this a, a statement like a fact that's that's your issue because that's not that hasn't been that and, and, on, and honestly katie if you go find that that video you might feel like a bit of a bit of a oof if you watch that video because honestly if you watch the video the child is not being traumatized it's not like they live in the sahara desert or up in alaska where it's snowing and it's negative 30 degrees like she's in shorts and a t-shirt and they're walking she's walking down a sidewalk a few blocks to her school yeah you know? and i do think this is why you know the thing is these little things make a huge difference to what we see in our world and most of us that are having these discussions are not happy with a lot of what we see in our world and therefore we have to be even more accountable for our own behavior and i will say again absolutely i say inappropriate things sometimes i'm very happy for those to be pointed out very happy in a respectful way so i can learn and do better next time um and i think if we all took that attitude it would be great i love listening to people who can express themselves really really well i've just been listening to loads of bob proctor recently and it's just amazing to watch him because he's come from nothing to something and he just expresses himself so well. And this is why I listen to things like this so I can get better at expressing myself. But equally, I it, I think people have to take accountability. And if you're going to take accountability to do that, ask more information if you're not sure. But when you read through that thing and see how many he must, you must do this. So basically what you're saying is it's your way or the highway, Katie. Exactly. Right? That Katie's the only one that's right. It's her perspective, well, the right perspective. Very right before I go in this mess globally. Right? And you know what they say when you're pointing the finger, you got three pointing back at you, Katie. So um and exactly. So I, you know, if I were Katie and I was concerned about that comment about the, the child walking to school, I would have worded it like man that's really awesome that the father is aware of this and that the parents are trying to to parent this little girl so that she doesn't continue this behavior so that she does have a pro proactive and a, a incredible life i'm a, however i'm a little bit concerned about the punishment is there any more information you could give me can you link me to the video that's how i would have asked it and there's nothing wrong with that there's yeah. absolutely nothing wrong two things can be true right you can acknowledge that the father is doing something proactive about the issue with his daughter bullying but you can also be concerned with the punishment that's okay but to accuse Catherine of me of things we never said to to twist our words and then to make it your way or nobody else's way and to paint a picture of the father that might not be true is not okay that's bullying that's mm -hmm. katie was being a bully that's a bully and i think you know there are different extremes and so my overriding feeling of this is like every single interaction we say, I've got a really, really good friend called Susie. I won't say her surname. And we have really open and honest discussions. I value her so much because she's so great. And we can have this and we can point things out to each other where we might have said something in a way that wasn't really as constructive as it could have been. I've learned so much from the way Susie can, um, communicates because she, instead of taking offense or saying, oh, Catherine says slightly wrong, I'm not going to do it again. She's like, well, actually, you know, this is this and this is how it makes me feel. What do you reckon? And I'll go back and listen to a message and I think, oh, I completely get it.
Yeah. My, my boyfriend's yeah. really good about that. My boyfriend is, yeah. that's one thing I've really learned from him. And he is really, really good at sitting back for a moment and thinking about things. And whenever something's happened in the years, you know, he, that upsets him with somebody else, he has the ability to sit back and say, I can see their perspective here. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he's not upset, but it makes him a more calmer, a calmer individual. And he doesn't get into these issues because, you know, he can set his boundary. He can set a hard boundary, but he can also have that empathy where he understands where people are coming from. You yeah. know, that's something I've learned from him and, and watching him interact and his, that's why his business is so successful. Another reason why his business is so successful is because he's fair. He's very fair, you know, um, and, and, and you're debating, are you being fair? Are you being fair to, because the person that you're talking to is a human being like you, mm -hmm. Catherine and I, even though we were on a YouTube screen, we're human beings like the people that watch us. We're just humans. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not celebrities. We're not on some TV show, which they're human beings too. But, you know, we're, we're just normal people that oh, anybody can open up a YouTube channel, right? So, so to, to, to treat somebody like they're, like they're scum because they think about something different than you do. You're right, Catherine. I mean, what's, who's worse is that? I mean, that's why, why do we still think we're under the controllers? You know, because that's yeah. the same behavior. So, you know. What would happen energetically to program the whole energy, to program the AI, AI is such a big thing. If, if everyone watching this is like, look at the difference, what happens when you set off a trail of good. I was listening to some really great things. A lot of it's from Bob Crockton saying, if we were all raised with a lot more praise, not this, everyone's a winner, no one loses. I'm not talking about that ridiculous stuff. I'm talking about the state of everyone was raised with a much better self-image then we wouldn't have these problems. So the reason we all respond like this, and I would say this, Katie, is because we've all gone through this trauma of being raised with being knocked down and knocked down and knocked down. But we have a choice as to whether we're going to continue that behavior or not. I love we that. Yeah. So and then all, did, like, someone now like Katie. it's time for all of us to say, actually, I'm going to be the one in the generation that isn't going to continue this trend. Absolutely. I love that. Like, you know, Katie, instead of trying to knock us down for whatever reason, you don't even know us. Again, how can you shift that? I love that. I And I saw something, Catherine, once where somebody says, instead of telling a child, I'm so proud of you, tell a child, wow, you must be so proud of yourself. I love that. Just something simple. And, and I would say that with every comment you leave, are you proud of yourself for leaving that comment? Are you proud of yourself for calling that person a name? Or are you proud of yourself for being kind to that person? Mm. and being able to respectfully disagree but still really like that person you know you and that's that's the extreme too we've got i think that's why the bullying is on the rise as well because we have this weird idea now in society that every person in our life has to agree with us 100 percent exactly about everything and that's just impossible that's mission impossible right that's not you know that's the unattainable unicorn everybody's well, that's where you know if you want to be ai if you want to live in that ai world go get the brain chip yeah exactly there you go that's what they're trying to do to us there so absolutely that's what they want if you want to live in that compliant thing where we're all robots then there's a group there that are happy to have you join <laughs> the same exactly but yeah. other than that i think it's great that people have different my friends have different opinions that's the quirkiness. that's the that's what makes them them that's what makes their personality their personality and yes of course when it comes to opinions there's a huge gray area and of course the moralistic opinions obviously you want to be with somebody who's not a groomer or be people in your life that aren't groomers and that aren't you know doing the big stuff that's wrong but having little different opinions here or there that's what makes it interesting and that's what makes your friends special and unique and even if you disagree on something minor it's not it's not it's kind of fun you know you can make fun of each other it's it's i, I saw i you know it, it's bullying is one thing but when you can make fun of your friends in a loving way that's oh, a different thing completely and I just think, you know, like how, how, how much I, that's something about my childhood. I just so miss, I so miss the fact that it, it was not expected. You were not expected to have people that f felt the same as you. It was not expected. You know, you were, you were allowed to be diff be individual people with different and still love each other and still find each other really cool and want to hang out with each other. And, um, and so I encourage us to get back to that place, especially, especially if we think we're on the moralistically on the side of good especially if you're going to hold yourself to that standard of being of the light, then we need to start acting like it. 
you know yeah. what we whether we like or not there's a lot going on we were talking off camera we'll we'll leave this for next week but um um yeah i think there's a lot going on at the moment so now's the time we've got to level up more than ever you know now's the time for us to really focus our attention on where it needs to be focused on um and not not sweat the small, small stuff so to speak live and let live my friends live and let live and as my mama used to say growing up oh but by the grace of god go i mm. oh but by the grace of god go i we can we need to have some grace with people so all right you guys i can't wait to see um our our friends um thoughts on this down in the comment section below what do you think about bullying how would you i mean some of our friends watching do have youtube channels um if you don't have a youtube channel i know it's hard to put yourself in that per before I had a YouTube channel, I, I thought I knew what it was going to be like. I had no idea what it was going to be like. So I know it's hard yeah. to put yourself in that perspective, but like, how would you handle it? Like, how would you handle, what kind of boundaries would you, do you set, do you set for yourself? Um, for, for our viewers watching, perhaps maybe you have a boss that you feel like pushes your boundaries or coworkers that push your boundaries. How do you deal with that? Give, give Catherine and me and our other friends watching right now your opinion and, and how you deal with these things. Of course, you don't have to leave names. Of course, you can change names if you need to. Um, you know, how, how do you deal with the bullies? What What's your idea of how we move forward, being nicer to each other and having that human decency again? And you guys, once again, I'm going to put all of Catherine's links down in the comment section, or in the, excuse me, in the description box below. And, and I'll also put our video from last week in the description box below. If you missed that, please make sure if you are not subscribed to Catherine Edwards to go get subscribed to Catherine Edwards. Please double check our subscriptions too, guys, because sometimes... You get unsubscribed to channels. Again, I think half of that just might be a glitch with YouTube. Yeah. Um, so just give give the platform, even though we come down hard on YouTube, do give the platform a little bit of grace with that, that it could just be the computer system. And so make sure you're still subscribed to both of our channels um, so we can keep talking with you guys. And um, I actually think I'm going to set this up as a premiere so we can see... I can see the live chat as it's going so you guys can interact with us in real time hopefully i'll be in the chat i might not be in the chat in real time because we're going to be doing some traveling but hopefully i'll be able to top in the chat in real time and discuss this with you guys because i really really do value i mean we've got some really cool people that watch our shows don't we Catherine? we really we have really to do and we love for these coffee chats we love to hear your select suggestions for what you want us to chat so next time i think it won't be next week um because of agendas but the week after that will be on my channel so we alternate so stay subscribed to both and let us know what you want to hear us cover in these coffee chats because we want to do subjects that are of interest to you so please don't be shy about making suggestions exactly and that's a good point Kathy, because a lot of what we talk about here aren't black and white things they're very very gray very gray yeah gray so there really is no right answer it's just our opinion so we really and it's called a coffee chat because we want you to chat with us we want yes. you to be involved with this with us so please um yeah all right you guys well again everything will be down in the description box below next week for my channel it's going to be a little bit like so i'm going to be traveling um but we will be back the next week in the full swing of things with everything else so all right you guys, have a wonderful bye. day bye everybody bye, -bye.